What is Salesforce Pardot and how can you use it for your business? Well, in this video, you guys are going to find out. I'm Ben and welcome to Social Genie Digital. I'm going to dive into Salesforce Pardot, the B2B marketing automation software. What exactly is this software in detail? I'm going to show you guys a live account all the different features, I'm gonna run through them and really take you guys over my shoulder and show you exactly how the platform works. So let's not waste any time and let's dive in. So hopping right in here guys, Salesforce Pardot is a B2B marketing automation software, generally for the enterprise level of business. Now, if I hop in right here, you can just see an overview of what this platform is about. So it can help with smarter engagement with different leads, generating high quality leads, building meaningful relationships and calculating marketing ROI. Now, of course, you've heard of Salesforce and their main product is the sales cloud. Now, that is what the sales team uses to analyze leads, to generate leads, to segment leads. And really, the Pardot platform is for the marketer or more specifically, the marketing automation professional. And really, the goal of these two platforms is to align your sales team with your marketing team so they can actually work together once and for all. Now, this is really easy with the Pardot platform because they're both native to Salesforce. Now, other marketing automation platforms include Adobe Marketo, which is used by the likes of Amazon. And then you've even got HubSpot, which is generally starting to add a lot of new features and is starting to compete with the big boys. Okay, so now you're probably thinking, Ben, okay, that sounds very interesting, but how much is Salesforce Pardot? Well, let's hop into the pricing page before I dive into the actual dashboard and the features of the platform. So the pricing page is here. You can see the growth platform it works out 1,250, this is in euros because I'm accessing it from a European server um, per month, up to 10,000 contacts. The plus, which is the most popular, 2,500 euros a month and the advanced 4,000 euros per month. Now, generally you can't just buy it here. You have to speak to one of their reps and usually you can negotiate a good price depending upon what type of deal you're trying to do and what your business is. But just so you know roughly there what the pricing is. Now, as you can see there, that's up to 10,000 contacts. So you have to be aware that every 10,000 contacts, you'll have to pay for a new tier. So that's just something to be aware of. And it also is a great excuse to have great hygiene with your CRM or customer relationship management system. Okay, so here we are, we're on Salesforce right now. So this is what your sales team would see. Or if you're executive, this is the executive dashboard of which you would see for a client. Now to access Pardot, all you do, which is usually bought in conjunction with Salesforce as a package. So you'd click here, you'd go to apps and you'd search for the Pardot app and you can see it's there. You click that and then it opens. I've already opened it here. So I'll just go straight to Pardot, which is here. Okay, so here we are on the main dashboard of Pardot. Now this is a dashboard which has already been created. So you have pipeline generated. Now for those of you who are not familiar with the sales lingo, pipeline could be pending sales or it could be confirmed sales. There are a few ways of defining it, but that's the way I like to think of it. You've got new leads created. So these are people who might have filled out an online form or they could have given your company details at an industry trade show. Contacts touched by campaign. So that's a little bit like reach in social media lingo. And then remaining marketing budget, which for our clients, we usually recommend around 10% of their revenue, but it really does depend specifically on the business, the industry, the profitability, and of course their return on marketing spend. Then we have revenue by marketing channel. So here, we did a big event, 627K in revenue by that marketing channel. The web marketing, 425K, and the email, 312K. Now, of course, you don't really want to look just in absolute numbers. You want to look at which channel is getting you the best ROI. And this does change regularly with marketing as the market changes, as the industry changes. But in terms of average ROI by marketing channel, we can see we've got events here, 110%, web marketing, email. So as a marketer, I would look at that and say, really guys, we need to be doing more events to get that better ROI. Of course, there might be other costs which we're not fully taking into account, or maybe we just can't do a big event every single week. But really, that's just some factors to take into account. Pipeline by marketing channel, revenue by campaign, leads generated by campaign and pipeline by campaign. Now that's a marketing dashboard. The reason I'm showing you that first is 
all the factors of Pardot really do contribute to that type of dashboard so you can see your metrics. So I have that on my home screen. The features of Pardot are numerous and many. So okay, so let's start in a logical order. Generally, you'll run some type of campaign or you'll have a visitor come to your website and fill out a lead form. Their details will then go into this database here of which you can see the various names, the job titles, and of course, the company. Now, if you're doing account-based marketing, B2B marketing, this is all very vital to know. And of course, the job title is also extremely important. A CEO or a senior executive visiting your product, going through a demo, is a lot more valuable and should require a faster sales response than let's say a lower level employee because that's really just how it works. But still the lower level employee should not be overlooked, but you can just set up different automation paths for each employee. Now don't worry about data protection guys because this is just demo data I'm showing you right here, but it's just an example to help you guys out. So from there we go to our automations and here we can set up various automations, both with automation rules and then in the engagement studio. So if I go to the engagement studio and I show you an example here. So let's say we want to turn some of our brand advocates, some of our existing customers into trailblazers. So really we're aiming this at C-suite executives, the top prospects. So we want to send them an email the way we start all marketing campaigns. If they open the email, so we can put a decision here, decision tree, and that's basically the way automation rules work, then we want them to go to this point here and actually adjust what's called their lead score. So each lead has a score. Leads with a higher score, let's say it's a CEO, let's say it's someone who's been very engaged, they've opened a lot of emails, they've clicked a lot of links, they've visited the website, they've downloaded eBooks, they've gone through a, a demo, they will have a higher lead score than let's say somebody who's just visited the website once. And generally this is to help your sales team to actually target the right people and spend their time in the most valuable places with the people who are most likely to convert. So in this case, we adjust the lead score by 10 points. So we add 10 points there, we apply a tag, and then we also listen. So we set up another listening tab and we listen if any email link was clicked. So they didn't just open the email, but they actually clicked a link inside the email. So this is the power of a B2B automation platform. You can actually listen for specific link clicks. If they did, again, we adjust the score. We increase their lead score again. We say this person's very engaged, have a Salesforce task. So that could be for a salesperson to call this person, to reach out to this person with a personal email and then go from there. So that's just one example there. If they didn't click a link, we might reduce their lead score. And it's the same here. If they didn't open the email, we might actually wait a few days, wait five days I've put here, and then send another email. If they open that, then we adjust the score up and we apply a tag and we go through it again. If they didn't open that email, then we simply end. So I think that's probably one of the most powerful parts of this platform. Everything else really does feed into it. Now, one thing to note guys with the engagement studio is those rules and those automations are always on in general. So basically that means you don't have to turn them on and off. Whereas here I've got segmentation lists. So this could be you want to segment your CRM database, your customer relationship management database into various different categories. So you might want to segment by lead score, by brand advocates, by city, by region. And you can do all that here. And generally these are one-time tasks. So you set this up you say, I want to segment the leads into, for example, C-suite prospects. You run that and it will segment your entire database. So that's just an example there. The next point I'll show you guys is just email. Now, of course, many automation platforms can send email. Can You can use that to develop emails. Here, you can go through various different templates. So you can set up a template. I actually personally recommend getting a web developer or somebody that knows HTML, CSS, to set up a really nice template with your brand colors, really sort of picture perfect. And then from there, you can use that template for all your different campaigns and customize them. Now you don't need to do that because this has got a drag and drop interface, which is pretty easy, but that's just a little example if you really do want that sort of picture perfect email template. So for example, if I click on one here, we've got an email template for a three day nurture program. So you can say, hi, first name. So that will automatically populate the person's first name, which of course will increase engagement. So you say, hi, John, hi, Sarah, hi, Ben. So that's your templates. You can A-B test different emails. So you can send out two types of emails, um, segment your list, and then say, okay, 
which was the most popular, which had the most open rate, which had most link clicks. And really then you can reuse that email. It could have had a better call to action. It could be just the contents of the email. Either way, one email might have been more engaging than another email. And you can, and you can find out that with A-B testing. Next, we've got sort of scheduled. So you can have emails which are scheduled to go out, sent emails, drafts. Okay, so now onto the next section, guys. I hope you're still with me. We've got content. So content involves basically any marketing content which you use. So this could be forms. So for people to fill out a form with their contact details. And what I love about Pardot is it's very easy to create these forms in a really nice, slick and fast way without any sort of programming experience. Here's in a sort of example I can show you guys of a landing page. So this is quite easy to create. So this is one for Salesforce, obviously, but you fill out your first name, last name, email, and you can change these fields. Generally, I suggest having the minimum number of fields a person needs. And then you can use a feature called progressive profiling to actually gradually populate the fields in your database. So let's say you firstly ask just for their first name, job title, email. And then after when they visit your website again, and let's say they interact with a few more pieces of information, they want to download something, let's say it's a piece of gated content, you can then ask for their industry, their phone number, their surname. And you can just keep adding these details on and that's called progressive profiling. That's a really powerful part of both the Pardot platform and also Marketo. And you can also use form handlers if you want to use a form from a third party website and have that data automatically populate into your own database. So that's also really powerful. There's dynamic content. Now I love dynamic content. So dynamic content is one of the most underrated pieces of technology because in marketing today, when there's personalization, there is profit. So really it is about personalized experiences for your user. Think of Netflix, the way you go onto it and you've got a personal dashboard with what you've recently watched and what you might want to watch again. Now that's usually optimized with artificial intelligence, which you can also do in Pardot. And, or if you go onto Amazon, you've got your account there with exactly what you bought and what you might like to buy again. Now with dynamic content, it's really about speaking to the user in a language they understand. So you can send a single email with dynamic content panels and let's say that's split on industries. So if you send that to someone in the healthcare industry, they'll be connected to white paper reports for that industry. Whereas if you're sending it to an industry in manufacturing, they'll be connected to those white paper reports. Now, if that's confusing you, here's a simple way of showing you about dynamic content. So for example, a static web page, you go on, it just says welcome user, let's say. However, a dynamic web page will say, welcome Alice, if the person's name is Alice, it's 35 degrees in Singapore if the person is in Singapore. Or welcome Bob, it's 42 degrees in London. So, so it really matched to that specific user based on their region. Popular investing platforms such as Motley Fool do this quite a lot. So they have a sort of UK platform, a US platform. And if you go on there, it's a little bit different than just a .co.uk because it's personalized to content which you might have interacted with previously. Now you also have the search panel here so you can connect it to Google Ads and you can review sort of keywords, competitors, paid search. Personally, I still like going directly into Google Search Console, Google Analytics, but it's still there and Salesforce is really building out that part of the platform. And finally, guys, you can set up engage alerts. And this really is the part where the marketing connects to the sales. So, the, so these are alerts which you want to set up to go to sales when a lead has performed a certain sequence of actions. So they, so they might have heavily interacted with your content, downloaded an ebook, started a demo, and then now it's time for your salesperson to see that and reach out to those leads. Now with Pardot also, you can integrate this with Einstein AI or artificial intelligence, and you can use that to optimize your automations and also optimize your different segmentations. So that's quite a powerful part. It also has recommendations on there, which you can use. So that's probably one of the more differentiating factors of Pardot versus platforms like Marketo. So that's today's video, guys. If you did find value in this video and you do want more marketing tips, tricks, and hacks to help grow your brand or business, feel free to subscribe to this channel by hitting that subscribe button, turning that notification bell on. Now, if you're sitting there now and you're thinking, Ben, that sounds fantastic, but I still need help with my marketing strategy, then feel free to reach out to us via the first link in the description below. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. I hope you all have an incredible day and I'll see you guys in our next video. Keep growing.